Watch a cowboy knock out a fat feminist in Red Dead Redemption 2. In other news today, wrong think is now a crime in the UK. Also, there's a cool music producer expedition in London. In other news, I found an audio interface that looks like a fucking makeup box. And there's a new kind of chocolate. Seriously, a new one. White chocolate, dark chocolate, milk chocolate. There's a new type of chocolate which has just come out. Also, Antifa are the real alt-right. Player Unknown Battlegrounds is coming to the PlayStation 4 in December. And America is less sexist under Donald Trump. I'm Johnny Massacre, and you're witnessing The Johnny Massacre Show. Hello everyone, how is it going? I had to take off the get up because I'm so fucking hot. It's November in Tokyo, but it's like 21 degrees C. And man, my recording studio is always so hot. I don't know why. I think, I think some cunts always leave their heating on, which I guess is not a bad thing because I can save money, but still no more Back to the Future get up. Why was I wearing Back to the Future? Well, it's because this is the 50th episode of the Johnny Massacre show. I couldn't have done it without you. Seriously. It, I can't remember who it was, I'm going to have to go and find out, but I took a, a hiatus from the Johnny Massacre show and someone left a comment on my YouTube and said, where the fuck is the show? Ever since then, I promised myself to deliver, regardless if three people watch, a hundred people, hundred thousand like my Last Jedi um, video, or eight million like my ultrasound video, I decided I'm going to make a commitment to you and to myself and, and really... I wouldn't be doing this without you and it's um it's a bright star in my life so i really appreciate it and today i realized was the 50th episode i already recorded it and then at the end of it i thought fuck i've just recorded the 50th episode and i haven't made a fan for about it so i called it the 51st episode and now i have gone back in time to record the 50th episode with my delorean so that's why i'm wearing the back to the future get up i had to wear it in order to deliver the 50th episode of the johnny massacre show which i missed the first time around does that make any sense? I hope so. So there's kind of loads of shit going on today. In the last Johnny Massacre show, we talked a little bit about the midterms and whatever. I think the results have come in. Um, it looks good and bad for Donald Trump and the lefties. So I'm not going to talk about it uh, because it's pretty fucking boring. Maybe we'll, we'll dabble in it later. But yeah, that happened. So let's get into the fun news, which is in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can knock out a fat feminist. This is just fucking brilliant so cast your eyes to my screen people i'm going to bring you inside my computer have a look at this so we've got some whiny feminists talking about wanting to vote and it's actually ironic because in this time i don't think women could vote so she's running her mouth and then the cowboy confronts her Women voting? Sure, why not, he says. Then look what happens next. Oh, thank you, sir. You are a true progressive. Anyone dumb enough to want to vote, I say go for it. I'm with the cowboy. A cynic. How dull for you. I do hope you grow out of it, young man. It's so unappealing. Unappealing is what I do best. <sighs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Brutal. And then look, he turns around and chases her. He's like, right, I'm after you, bitch. So that, that made my day. That was really funny. Um, I think Rockstar are anti-SJW, so they've really just gone up massively in my book. How's that to start off the news cycle for today? So what else is happening? So wrong think is now a crime in the UK. So there was a big fire and this tower burned down. So for bonfire night on the 5th of November, some family or group of friends was making their own bonfire and they made a fake uh, tower that actually really burned down last year. And they were kind of mocking it as it, as it burned to the ground. And 
Honestly, I actually think that sounds kind of funny. It's it's a private joke, I guess. Um, if they released it onto social media, then it's another matter entirely. But if it was a private joke and it, it found its way onto social media, I don't have a problem with it. The funniest jokes are the ones that are the most on the nose. If something happened in recent memory, then maybe it's a bit too soon to make the joke. But now people make jokes about Nazis and Jews and Muslims and Christians and whatever. And it's actually it's pretty funny or it was until about three years ago when SJW culture perpetrated by left wing politics became mainstream culture. So, yeah, look. I understand it's it's a bit close to this incident to make a joke about it, but if you do it in private, I think the point is most of the time when you make these jokes, you're trying to be as offensive as possible to your mates. You know nobody's listening and you just try to say something ridiculously offensive and that's always really funny. It, don't lie, don't lie it is. There's plenty of comedy before this SJW culture came through where people are mocking black people, white people, whoever, and it's it's really fucking funny. So unfortunately though, the people who've done this have been arrested, arrested, arrested for making a mock effigy, burning effigy of this tower that really burned down last year. How the fuck is this even a crime? People in the UK, where I don't live anymore for these kind of reasons, are paying their fucking taxes that fund the policemen and policewomen, and that tax money is going on arresting people for just making some politically incorrect joke so have a look at this article i can't even fucking believe this this is mad the world has gone mad mate grenfell tower bonfire police search property a house linked to an offensive video showing a model of grenfell tower being burned on a bonfire has been searched by police six men Two aged 49, two aged 19, and the others 46 and 55 were arrested on suspicion of a public order offence and have been released under investigation. A video shared on social media shows a cardboard model of the tower being set alight by a laughing crowd. Prime Minister Theresa May had called the video utterly unacceptable. The men were arrested after handing themselves in. The footage shows a large model bearing a Grenfell Tower sign, complete with paper figures at the windows, being set on fire. Laughter can be heard off camera as the effigy is set alight with onlookers shouting, help me, help me, and jump out the window. Okay, so if it was, if it was shared on social media, then I do have a bit of sympathy here. Um, because, yeah, it's quite close to the event and whatnot. And it is a little bit sick that someone went to the trouble to actually make the fucking thing and put all the people in the windows and kind of then start laughing about it. For me, it would be funny if it was just a private joke and saying, oh, let's let's make a, a bonfire um, of, of this tower. And just with your mates, you're talking about it and you're all having a laugh because it's really offensive and you wouldn't really do something like that. So the fact that these people did it is actually kind of bad. I didn't know that. And um, but but the point is, this is not a crime the, the, or this shouldn't be a crime, because if this is a crime, it's basically a, it's nearly a thought crime. The thought manifested itself in the bonfire, but it's basically a thought crime. N these people are doing it within the privacy of their own place. OK, it's on social media, but people being able to see it, it doesn't. So what? Who, who fucking cares? You know, you're sometimes going to see things you don't like. This is not a serious crime that should drain police resources and UK taxpayers' money. Simple as that. It's completely, complete fucking nonsense. So yeah, that's happened. And that really kind of pissed me off. Um, I don't support the people who made this, but I definitely don't think they should be arrested. And I think once you start arresting people for doing stuff like this, trivial stuff, you're opening a can of worms and then people are going to be arrested for all kinds of trivial things that the, the current ruling party deems as a crime when it's not really a crime. Don't go down this route. It's fucking ridiculous. People are way too sensitive these days. Right, moving on to other news. There's a music producer expedition in London. So I stumbled across this the other day. And it just looks like a really interesting thing going on there for music producers like myself. I'm gutted that I can't be in the UK when this is happening. So let's have a quick look at this. Uh, BBC Music Introducing Live, that's what it's called. It's at Tobacco Dock, London on the 8th of November to the 10th of November. So it's over three days. It's going to be starting tomorrow. And there's going to be live performances as well. So... 
if you're looking at my screen now, let's just have a look at some of the things going on. Getting your music on the radio, that's something every artist wants to be able to do. Getting funding for your music career, how to get a job in the music business, live songwriting session with Jamie Cullum and some other cunts. Uh, vinyl, revival, a guide to pressing and releasing records. This is boner worthy stuff. Help Musicians UK presents Doing It Differently, Sustaining Art, Business and Health. PRS Foundation presents Investing in the Future of Music in Association with Key Change. Making great music videos and making money from them. Where are the festival headliners of the future? How to break an act in 2018 and beyond. So there's just, there's just cl um, program after program of good shit that I would be interested in. I hope they're doing some live thing. Uh, there's stuff for beginners too, getting started as a DJ and whatnot. Social media, A&R. This looks fucking awesome. So, there's also some guy from Abbey Road who is doing a presentation here. And maybe I can bring it up for you and find it. Because Abbey Road, as you know, or you should know, is the greatest recording studio in the world and so any news coming out of abbey road is worthy of your attention um unfortunately i can't find it now but there's a mastering engineer from abbey road who's going to be speaking and explaining why you need mastering uh, mastering is the process of making music louder it's not just as simple as turning up a volume fader unfortunately you need a lot of very high um, tech gear analog and digital and then with that you can process uh, songs to, to bring it up to standard uh, the radio standard that has been the standard for the last I don't know 80 years or so so I wish I could be there especially for the mastering uh, stuff but unfortunately I'm not in the UK but that's very interesting stuff if you're into music so make sure to go on over to introducinglive.co.uk if you're interested in this and if you're in London the UK I would suggest getting down there if you're an artist because you're probably going to learn a hell of a lot god my heart is like fucking pounding me I've just done I've been sick for five days and I went to the gym and I'm kind of feeling a bit better but and I wanted to go the day before, but I persuaded myself not to. Because if you go to the gym when you're a bit sick, it fucks you up. And I went today and I was doing it. I did the bench press. I hadn't lost that much strength, really. And uh, did, you know, all kinds of weights and shit. And then when I did the kickboxing, that fucked me up. That fucked up my lungs. But I was on the massive buzz after that, feeling high. You can see I'm in good spirits. And now I've just eaten a shitload of food. And I've had some spicy fucking... I put some spicy shit on my cheese. It's so fucking spicy. Now my head is all just like rushing because of the spice and the illness <laughs> and, the, and the exercise combined. So my heart's like fucking pounding right now. I'm on, I'm having serious vibes. So if I slump on the desk in a minute, please make sure to dial Japan. That's plus eight one and then one one nine. Um, it's nine one one in reverse for the ambulance. Thank you kindly. So in other news from today, I found an audio interface that looks like a fucking makeup box. Now, my mate Luke, who I seem to reference in every episode, because I love Luke, he's my best mate. Um, he bought one of these things by a company called Teenage Engineering, and it's a synthesizer. But what sets it apart from the competition is it kind of looks like some nostalgic 1980s technology and looks a bit like something that kids would play with but it's actually for adults so the style of these devices is very nostalgic and very quirky have a look at this this is by teenage engineering this is the op1 what my friend bought and then there used to be these weird shitty games called game and watch and um, that people played back in the day and the same company has emulated them here with some kind of synthesizer and you're starting to see this more and more now these synthesizers sorry if you don't know what a synthesizer is it's a sound generator it's a piece of hardware or software that generates sound basic waveforms that go do 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 something like this and then you can process them to kind of make cool digital melodies or you can model analog stuff or model instruments and, and, and whatnot and yeah, you're seeing this trend where technology is getting so good and it must be so affordable that developers can actually concentrate their time, resources and, and money on the design. And 
I think this kind of makes it um, more accessible to people in general. It might encourage new people to start producing music, which is good in my book because that's what my life's all about. And now there's something, a sound card, which is basically a, a kind of a hard, um, a piece of hardware uh, full of microchips and usually um, it interfaces with your computer via a USB or some kind of standard communication protocol and then once you hook it up to a computer there is a digital to analog converter so that the ones and zeros the music or sound inside of your computer is converted into voltage which is then converted into air pressure which comes out of your speaker basically an audio interface is a way to get music out of your computer and into speakers and there is one that has just come out that looks amazing like a makeup box is that is that what you call it i have to ask my girlfriend it's designed specifically for females apparently have a look at this I'm on musicradar.com now and they ask, is this audio interface in the shape of a cosmetic product, the most misguided product launch ever, designed specifically for females? I just thought it looked so cool because it really does look like a makeup box, but that's actually an interface that gets sound, excuse me, out of your computer. So it's by a company called MIDI Plus. And the article says MIDI Plus's Mirror, it's called Mirror, is a one in two out audio interface with the added bonus of an LED framed mirror and eyeshadow looking knobs, which as the Taiwanese firm states is specifically designed for females. We'll just let that sink in for a moment. W what's wrong with that? To say that this has to be one of the most misguided products in music tech ever is a slight understatement. Quite how it got past the I've got a great idea stage, we don't know, but it did. And here we have it. In what seems like an R&D session that started off with a PowerPoint presentation featuring the 2001 Helen Hunt Mel Gibson film, What Women Want, it appears that the folks at MIDI Plus had the view that this is exactly what is needed in this day and age. Well, if anyone from the company is looking at the internet today, they're in for a surprise and perhaps MIDI Plus will change its mind. And then someone tweeted it, some feminist, and said, you might as well make a CD deck that looks like a stove to get women involved in it. Okay, so they're saying that this is sexist because it's saying all women love makeup and in order for women to like something, you have to give them a carrot on a stick and offer them some makeup, which is basically exactly true. Women fucking love makeup. Show me a woman that doesn't spend a shitload of money on makeup. Even some of the ugly bitches that I banged spend shitloads of money on makeup. I guess they're trying to fix their faces and the hot ones certainly spend a ton on makeup. It's like an investment because the hotter they look, the more attention they get, the more things they get, the more good stuff they get. Women love makeup. So if you make a product look like makeup, makeup women are going to be more interested in it you know when i even looked at this i didn't even think about its origins i just thought it looked cool but okay so they want to attract women to it in asia you know what women are not fat hippopotamuses hippopotami so they actually take good care of themselves they haven't let themselves go they have a reason to take care of their appearances out here in asia not like you fat fuckers in england where you've written this article and so therefore women who take pride in their appearance like things like makeup they're feminine and they would probably be attracted to a product like this that is just stating facts is this author saying women don't like makeup because in which case they should all stop wearing makeup and then let's see how women feel after a week so yeah i just think this is a really cool product it's called mirror by um midi plus that's awesome Okay, so new chocolate. This is pretty interesting. This is pretty interesting. I don't eat chocolate, but I used to. So I live vicariously through you, my watchers. When you munch chocolate, it's like I'm eating it with you. So apparently there's a new kind of chocolate, according to Japan Today. And to celebrate, well, some company, some chocolate company is making a big fanfare and trying to get some press by building a replica of Japan's famous Tokyo Tower, which is a ripoff of the Eiffel Tower and making it out of chocolate. And it's all this new kind of chocolate. So let's look at this article called Tasty Tower. It says a 5.3 meter tall replica of Tokyo Tower made with 8,000 lingerie, lingerie, chocolate macarons, macaroons, stands in the lobby of the ANA Intercontinental Hotel in Tokyo. It is part of the hotel's chocolate sensations event, which runs until December the 26th. Highlighting the event is the world's first ruby chocolate afternoon tea. Featuring ruby chocolate, the world's newest form of chocolate and the fourth variety of chocolate after dark milk and white chocolate. 
developed and created by Belgian Swiss cocoa company Barry Calabau in September 2017. It is sweet, slightly spicy, and all natural. For the afternoon tea, over 4,500 kilograms of chocolate will be handcrafted into 220 delicious items and available every day until December the 26th in 11 of the hotels, restaurants and bars. The Chocolate Sensations event also includes innovative workshops and seminars staged by international bean-to-bar specialists, artisanal producers of fine chocolate, as well as local curators of chocolate. Blah fucking blah. Have a look at this shit. This is Ruby Chocolate. Kind of looks like it would be strawberry flavoured. I just think that's pretty interesting. But to be honest, mate, chocolate is fucking evil. It makes you fat. It gives you diseases. It fucks with your head, your mental condition. It's, um, it does. It really does. It makes people get high. You know, you see kids when they eat too much sugar. It's the same with adults. We still get that buzz. And it's addictive. And it just releases serotonin in the brain. So really nothing good will come of chocolate. Who can have just one chocolate? It's one of the most addictive substances. It's also, the darker it is, the more kind of caffeine it has in it, which will kind of make you even more twitchy. So chocolate, we've been brainwashed and conditioned into thinking it's this lovely thing, but it's just because of the rush of serotonin we get when we eat it. We, we just continue to look at it fondly, even though we know it's bad for us. Chocolate, fuck chocolate. And that's about it for today's episode. As you could hear, some audio problems were kicking in. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with my setup, but I will have to fix it in the days to come. So once again, I am back from the future to give you this news. I'll be going back to the future in a minute. Post this show and 50 episodes. What can I say? Um, It happened in a very short space of time. And here's to 100. It's time to make like a tree and leave. See you tomorrow.